Mary had a little man, man, man. The fall. We believe that all men are created equal. Equal. The magnificent blah, blah, blah. mosaic that is American <laughs> Radio Beacon to Radio Beacon. I have a dream today. Change has come to America. Believe me. Help is on the way. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey. It's a figment of your imagination. Randy Rhodes Show. Turn up your mind. Oh, everybody, it's Good News Friday, you bastards. On this vote, the yeas are 311, the nays are 114, with two recorded as present. Two-thirds voting in the affirmative, the resolution is adopted, and a motion to reconsider is laid upon the table. The clerk will notify the governor of the state of New York of the action of the House. Under Clause 5D of Rule 20, the chair announces to the House that in light of the expulsion of the gentleman from New York, Mr. Santos, uh -huh. the whole number of the House is now 434. Oh! Good news, everybody. Good news. Now, I sound froggy, and I'm going to be froggy all day, but I, I figured if I didn't come in today, you would think I was a figment of your imagination. So, uh, you know, I dragged it on in. But uh, don't breathe on me, Brett. <laughs> Look, I'm trying to not make it obvious, but we've been keeping a safe distance. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even know what it is, okay? I have no earthly idea what it is. If anybody knows what it is, you could call me and tell me what it is because I called my doctor two days ago and I asked her if she had heard of anything going around and uh, that could not allow her to make a diagnosis according to her. She didn't, uh, the, you know, the staff called me two days later. Two days later and said, would you like to be seen today? I was like, well, I was off of work two days ago when I called you. And then I was off yesterday. I could have come in. But now I have to go to work like this, you see. And I sounded even worse first thing in the morning. I said, do you hear, do you hear what I sound like? She said, yeah, I hear what you sound like. I'm like, so what is it? Is something going around? I don't know. You have to come in. Didn't even ask me what color my sputum was. I think that's a key question. I do. <laughs> It's cloudy, is what I will say. But anyway, I have no idea what I have. I can only tell you uh, that, uh, you know, Howard went home to see his grandbabies. They're his grandbabies, not me. I'm not old enough to be a grandma. <laughs> Who are we kidding now? Okay, so uh, he went home to see them. And uh, when he got there, uh, everything was fine. Upon leaving, he learned that uh, one of them had RSV, which I told you is like supposedly a kid's disease. Like, but they say now if you're 60 and, and a month old, you could die. You could die from it. And I just uh, didn't want to get the vaccination, so I didn't. And then um, the other one uh, had pneumonia. Okay, they're both okay now. But he came home and uh, Jessica arrived from California. And now me and Jess are sick as dogs. We're sick. Sick, I tell you. She has it too. But I don't know what it is. I honestly do not know. I know it's not COVID. I told you that on uh, Tuesday because I had tested for it. I wouldn't have come in if I was, uh, you know, a contagion. <laughs> but apparently there are other things you can catch now. Now, that's the good news, isn't it? Isn't that part of Good News Friday? <laughs> is that there are other things you can die of now that are not COVID? I think that's spectacular. I think that's fabulous. <laughs> there are other good things to tell you today, really. I mean... Not only did they, you know, they, they expelled George Santos today, which was long over freaking due, okay? I mean, apparently he was like, uh, you know, hanging around their necks because they wanted to, uh, you know, scream and yell about Hunter Biden this and Hunter Biden that and Hunter Biden's laptop and Hunter Biden and Hunter Biden, you know. And Hunter Biden said, you want me to come and testify on December 13th? Okay, I will. I would be happy to but only if it's in public. And oh my God, the Republican Party went, no, not in public, so everyone can see that we're badgering you and that there's no there there. No, no, not in public. You know, we want to hold you and your father accountable for something fictitious, something that didn't really happen. We just want to embarrass you over your nudes that you like to take when you were a little crackhead. That's all we want to do is we want to put Marjorie Taylor Greene in the chair and have her show your nudes. You know, and say that you're a perv and all that stuff because there is no crime in that. But, uh, you know, America will be uh, recoiling in horror at your, uh, you know, pics. <laughs> and, you know, so he said, fine, I'm willing to uh, face those slings and arrows, but I will only do it in public. <laughs> and they said, no, 
No, don't come to, don't, no. We want you in private and we want you, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, to just, not have your story told in the way you want to tell it. We only want to tell it the way we want to tell it. And the way we want to tell it is we will we will release excerpts of stuff you said. Like um, if you said, so I did have a gun. I wasn't supposed to have a gun, uh, but I actually threw the gun away. We will cut out the part where your girlfriend or you threw the gun away. You see what I mean? And, and, and they're, they're like, and Dan Goldman was like, you know, you, you're going to talk to us about accountability. You're the party of George Santos. One of my colleagues says, Hi. we will hold members accountable. You are the party of George Santos. <laughs> Who are you holding accountable? The guy is an alleged and acknowledged liar and indicted, and you protect him every day. Don't lecture us with your projection and your defense of Donald Trump. It's pathetic, and it's beneath you, and it's beneath this body, and I yield back. You want to hear the response to that <laughs> from the Republican Party, from the, um, from the timber chats, from the uh, evangelical right, if you must, if you will, if you may? Here. Don't you have any concerns about his conduct? I mean, all the allegations, the criminal charges, he's admitted to lying about so much of his life. Uh -huh. I mean, why should he be walking around here going to classified briefings and the like? To say that anybody in Congress can cast stones. I mean, we're, we're a bunch of sinners. And that's basically what we all are. So, wait a minute. He sounds like me. I sound like him. I sound like Tim Burchett. You sound just like Tim Burchett. I know. It's so crazy. Uh, but he, his his defense of George Santos, a guy who lied about his religion, a guy who said he was Jewish, a guy who said his mother died in one of the towers on 9-11, a guy – she did not uh, – a guy who actually said that his grandparents were Holocaust survivors. They were not. A guy who actually said he played volleyball. This was his lie. He played volleyball at a college he never went to. A guy who stole from his own – uh, donors from his own constituent, you know, it, it, it's a, we're all sinners. We, we, we are all sinners. Really? I'm not a sinner. What's my sin? I never stole nothing from nobody. I'm, I'm a sinner. Hand raised. What, what did you do? Look, uh, no, you, know, you no, said no, it. You, know, you master in theology, you go ahead and you don the frock. I'll come and I'll, I'll tell you my sins. I don't. Oh, so now you're a Catholic that no. only confesses uh, in, no. the, in, the, in the confessional. Okay. Yeah, well, I'm not going to confess on air for sure. You know, you know what that reminds me of? The scene from um, A League of Their Own where Madonna goes in to uh, make her confession. They're, you know, playing in the women's baseball team uh, during the World War II. And uh, she goes into the confessional and the priest comes out and passes out cold. <laughs> Just <laughs> that's <it>. can't take <laughs> it. <laughs> Like, holy crap, man, that's that's really quite something. But, uh, yeah, no, we're not all sinners, okay? We're not all sinners. We don't all steal from our constituents, okay? We don't all lie about our mothers dying in one of the towers on 9-11. We don't claim we're Jews when we're not Jews. Like, who would want to do that anyway? Like, who would, especially now, for Pete's sake, for the love of the Lord, who would want to do that crap? I mean, the, the amount of lying this man did, uh, the, you know, that he worked for pre, uh, prestigious, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, what do you call it? investment banks. I mean, it's just it's so bizarre. We're all sinners, you know, we're all sinners. So, you know, he voted he voted not to expel this uh, thief, this. Uh, and, and, you know, George Santos, he's good. Here's the beauty. Here's the beauty part of this story. OK, he's still under indictment, real federal criminal indictment, 23 counts. OK. He still, he goes on trial in September. Once he is convicted, and he will be, he will go to jail, where he will promptly tell everybody, I was a U.S. congressman, and no one will believe him. <laughs> you know, I mean, if, if, if you're looking for Botox at a, you know, fair price, he's your guy. If you're looking for money at the commissary, he, don't, don't ask him for nothing, because he ain't got nothing to give you. He's going to end up so, oh, my God. I just, I, I but, yeah, he's, he, he's going to jail. He is. I was once a U.S. con, liar. <laughs> 
all things Randy at RandyRhodes.com. Go, go for launch. Speaking truth to power, the, the Randy Rhodes Show. Show. Oh, now I sound like Duffy. Look, this is a serious investigation. This uh-huh. is about public corruption at the highest levels of our government. We have <laughs> over 10,000 pages of documents that we've obtained pertaining to Hunter Biden's financial transactions with our enemies around the world. <laughs> we need to ask him hundreds of questions. If he comes in for one hearing with 24 members having five minutes each to ask questions with the Democrats yelling and screaming like they do every hearing, we would probably get about 30 to 35 questions in. We need to ask him hundreds of questions about specific transactions with our enemies around the world. <laughs> he just loves to say that crap. <coughs> they got nothing. This is the problem. They got nothing on Hunter Biden, nothing at all. And so when he offers to come in and testify, but in public where everybody can, you know, hear what great questions James Comer of Kentucky has for Hunter Biden about our enemies, the whole world can hear his answers under oath. The whole world can decide for themselves whether or not Hunter Biden is some sort of a criminal. And uh, does that then extend to his dad? Uh, you know, Hunter Biden is not in line for anything impeachable. Know why? He holds no office that is subject to impeachment. So what the hell are they doing? (laughs) It makes no sense when you just say the truth. But uh, this is what they uh, have and this is what they're selling because, you know, it's almost 2024, everybody. And that is going to be a gruesome election year. That is going to be fraught with all kinds of dis and misinformation the next year is. So uh, strap on in because today is December 1st. We only have like a, a three weeks before everybody checks out and goes on vacation or holiday or Christmas break or whatever it is you do. And God love you. You deserve it. We all worked our butts off this year, every one of us. So go enjoy. But when you come back, just know it's going to be an election year. It's going to be 2024. And this is going to be a heavy, heavy lift because the media is so unfair to the president of the United States. They just won't give him any credit. And you know what? I will. I will. Because it's been an unbelievably phenomenal year for getting things done if you're a Democrat, okay? You know what he did today? While they're sitting here talking about Hunter Biden and impeaching him from what? I have no idea. Life? From his own private? He's not in the line of, he he has no office. He has no job that would make him subject to impeachment. So why is the House treating him as if he is holding an office that is subject to impeachment? I mean, it makes no sense. It really honestly makes no sense. And if they have all of this evidence, produce some of it, a little bit of it, a modicum of it, a little tiny, teeny, tiny taste of it. They got nothing except dirty pictures of Hunter Biden, okay? He liked to uh, self-photograph, let's just call it that. Anthony Weiner, too, cost him his job, but at least he was a congressman. This guy is not. I, I, anyway, why am I wasting time on this? It, it makes no sense to me that they would, uh, you know, this is all they got to offer you, is, is, is you know, the suggestion that uh, Joe Biden may or may not have, you know, I don't know, canoodled with, uh, you know, enemies of the United States of America because his son asked him to? I mean, is that your theory? In pl- Here's the good news. The good news is, you know what uh, Joe Biden was able to do today? Today, just today, he sent an email. What? I know. He sent an email to 813 thousand student loan borrowers telling them 813,000 telling them that their student loans have been forgiven 813,000 student loan borrowers were told today by the president of the United States that their student loans had been forgiven here is what the email said if you were lucky enough to be one of these 813,000 it said congratulations your student loan has been forgiven because of actions my administrative uh, my administration took to make sure you received the relief you earned and deserved for too long the student loan program failed to live up to its commitments And millions like you never got the relief you were owed because of errors and administrative failures. Congratulations, everybody. Then, did you see the GDP report today? Did you see the economy, the economic report today? Do you know what GDP was uh, in in November? 5.2% growth. 
5.2 percent growth. This, this is something that Trump promised if you let him pass your tax dollars to the wealthiest Americans, you would see 4 percent growth. Remember that? Remember that lying? Remember that bull? But you had to give two trillion dollars to the wealthiest Americans in order to have that result. Well, Biden didn't give jack crap to, you know, the wealthiest Americans. In fact, he invested in, uh, you know, places in, in West Virginia. He invested in places in uh, Lauren Boebert's district and went there to make fun of her because she was against investments in her own freaking district because she is that stupid. And he was able to, you know, like uh, show everybody in Boebert's district that the Inflation Reduction Act actually produced all these jobs for you. It does the exact opposite of what Americans need right now. The historic investments we're celebrating today is in Congressman Boebert's district. (laughs) She's one of the leaders of this extreme mega movement. She, along with every single Republican colleague, voted against the law that made these investments and jobs possible. And that's not hyperbole, that's a fact. And then she voted to repeal key parts of this law. (laughs) And she called this law a massive failure. You all know you're part of a massive failure? (laughs) Did you know that? Tell that to the 850 Coloradans who get new jobs in Pueblo and CS Wynn thanks to this law. Tell that to the local economy that's going to benefit from these investments. Tell that to anyone who wants to listen. I mean, this is a woman who literally won her election by, what, 500 votes, plus or minus 26? 500 votes, okay, in a district that Donald Trump won by nine percentage points. She eked it out with 500-some votes with a guy from Aspen running against her, a, a, you know, a council member from Aspen, Colorado, going down there to challenge her, and she was able in a recount to find 500 votes and is now the— I, she she's not going back to Congress. You understand that, right? Then after that, she actually trashed the Inflation Reduction Act, which created CS Wind, which created a, almost a, a thousand jobs in Pueblo, her district, and then got caught watching Beetlejuice the musical vaping and being felt up by some guy. And then she denied that she was vaping. So they had to release the videotape. And that's how we found out that she was also being felt up by some guy. This holier than now, Lauren Boebert. I mean, this is MAGA. This is what they are. Oh, you want Hunter Biden to come and testify? All right, I'll be there December 13th. Oh, no, no, don't come. Don't come. No, no. We, we need to ask you, you know, millions of questions, millions of questions. And we can't do that in public. Why not? Why can't you do that in public? I don't know, but I'll think of something. I mean, this is such bogus bullcrap, okay? Meanwhile, you have one of the most productive administrations in the history of the presidency. 813,000 people get student loan uh, relief today. Forgiven, just wiped out. You don't know it anymore. It's all good, right? And what will the Republicans say? Why don't they have to pay? They borrowed. They should have to pay back. Okay, Marjorie Taylor Greene, then you pay back your uh, your, uh, COVID loans. Yeah. Oh, those were forgiven? Bite me. Call in, connect. To speak to Randy, call 561-270-3844. 561-270-3844. All right, Daniel in California. Hi, Randy. Hi, Daniel. Uh, I just, um, I'm calling because, uh, I think something has to be done about the fact that the corporate media is acting as publicity agents for Donald Trump. And if you if you landed from Mars yesterday and you want to know about the presidential election, you think of Donald Trump as a virile, genius Superman who can solve all the problems of the country in one week if right. we if we only give him the chance. And President Biden as a senile leader who can't put his own shirt on without help. The, the, the thing's ridiculous, and I, I'm trying to get a petition started with some teeth to say that these, that these guys have to start covering it fairly, or no, we will not watch one second of corporate media news, ABC, CBS, NBC, wherever it is, and, and, we'll, and we'll monitor it until such time as they start being fair 
We're not going to do it. We won't buy any sponsor, anybody the sponsors on there. We won't buy the product. It has to be something that they understand, and that's what they understand because it's just, it's just terrible. I mean, I mean, fifty-one percent of the people in the battleground states actually think that Donald Trump is a man with a big risk of professional accomplishment. Huh. Where did they get that idea? I don't know. Yeah, I, I mean, they've been big, they they've been a publicity agent for forty years. Look, here, here, here's the only thing about Donald Trump. Donald Trump is winning in a Republican primary by a lot. That's it. He, right. He's also uh, under federal indictment. Uh, he's also facing 91 felony counts, okay, in four different uh, you know, jurisdictions. The court just ruled today that he doesn't have presidential immunity from the civil lawsuits that the police officers uh, who were battered and uh, beaten, a couple of them, you know, literally died uh, in January 6th's, uh, you know, melee there, um, that he has no presidential immunity, that those civil suits can go ahead. They can uh, actually proceed. Uh, he doesn't enjoy that, even though that happened while he was president. Uh, there's no presidential immunity because of the crime fraud exception to it. So I, I don't I don't know why people, you know, uh, would say that they think that he has a large set of accomplishments. Yeah, it's incredible. But it doesn't make it, it, it makes no sense at all. But to, but to be said that over and over who and said, over. But and see, here's the thing where I take issue with you. I, I don't hear anybody saying that. I mean, I see, oh, really? it, I, I see it on social media. I see, you know, like a bunch of, uh, you know, trolling bots. And I see a bunch of, uh, you know, sycophantic maggots, you know, uh, defending him. But I don't see anything on the TV that says Donald Trump has a long list of accomplishments. I do see, no. I do see sycophants like Sean Hannity saying, you know, he's the best president America ever had kind of thing. But that's about it. Oh, uh, But I would say the, the, the supposedly objective news services like ABC and CBS and all that. They, they go out of the way to promote the guy and, and, and show him a good life. At least that's why I look at it. And I hate the guy's guts. I've hated his guts for 40 years. But one more thing, I've been fighting the Dallas for 50 years. I'm 73 years old. And I, and I worked for McGovern for president in 1972. And I made a lot of friends back there as leftists. And being a sneaky leftist that we are, these guys got jobs high up in the Koch Brothers organization, the Defense Department, and the Republican Party. They didn't feed me information that no one's supposed to have for years. Now, now a lot of them are gone. And so their nieces and nephews and sons and daughters and young friends are doing it. Well, I, don't understand. Those, I don't understand what you're saying. I'm sorry. It's just my, these people have gotten jobs as moles in the, moles moles? In the Republican people Party. People have gotten jobs as moles in the Republican Party. Well, well they're actually they're not. That's Listen, not the job. I, but, I'm sorry, Dan. I just can't follow you. I can't. I, I don't understand what oh, you're saying. Well, the whole thing is. These people have gotten jobs in the Republican Party, the Defense Department, and 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 the Koch Brothers organization, and they, what they are, they're more. Okay, they who? Me, what, who? These which, people I know, I can't give their names. Well, then you can't say that. Then. Oh, okay, I, I, I won't say that then. No. Okay, I won't say it. No. All right. I, I'm just saying that this guy, this guy Trump has plans to do stuff that are just beyond comprehension. I mean, so I mean, then you sound like you would be on Donald Trump's side because Donald Trump's side says what you just said, that people are burrowed into the, the federal government and civil service. No, this, this isn't and federal, that they, this need, is, they then need to be, uh, you know, expelled, expunged, removed, uh, purged. No, no, no. What I'm saying is, 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 is these organizations, the Copers has an organization in the, in the 70s. They were still around back then. And, of course, the Republican Party and all that. And, these, and I get private information, and every bit of the information I've gotten has been proven later on to be true. But all I'm saying so is— So what I'm saying is then you are now down with Donald Trump's theory that people— No, I'm not. Yeah, you are. No, 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 no. No, that's— uh, uh, oh, well, um, uh, uh, I'm going to let you go, okay, because I honestly uh, don't understand. Just a little bit too much ro room to roam. His original point, I was, um, I don't think the, the, the media outlets he's talking about so much promote Trump as they downplay Biden's accomplishments. I think that is definitely a thing.
they never talk about Biden's accomplishments. I mean, like today, okay, uh, 813,000 people have had their loans forgiven. Today, we found out GDP in this country is 5.2%. Today, we found out that the stock market had its best November ever, ever in the history of Wall Street, okay? Uh, we found out all this uh, economic stuff today, that inflation is down and wages are up, okay? And that wages are going up faster than inflation so that your wages are now beating inflation and nobody's reporting it at all they're talking about you know santos being expelled okay great you know like uh, that's a thing it's good first of all if i still lived where i'm from if i still lived in douglaston queens i'm actually from brooklyn but i was raised in uh, queens after the time i was 12. so that he would this is crazy okay if where i was born in brooklyn my Congress member would be Hakeem Jeffries, okay? That would be my Congress member. But if I moved, which I did, to Queens, my Congress member would then be George Santos. I mean, talk about a dichotomy uh, of, of people. It's, it's an unbelievable thing, right? And that the only reason why a guy like George Santos was elected in a place that could produce a, 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 a congressman like Hakeem Jeffries, because he lied, because George Santos lied to the voters. He lied to every single person that cast a vote for him. My district in uh, Queens is typically a Democratic district. It's not wildly progressive. But it is a Democratic district. And the only way George Santos became the uh, representative there is by lying. So it's good that he's been expelled. But the good news doesn't end there. That's why I felt the need to come in today and explain to you that Bidenomics is unbelievably good. That it freaking works. And maybe last night you saw. I don't know. Probably not. <laughs> But maybe last night you did see that there was a debate between Ron Death Sentence and Gavin Newsom. And Ron Death Sentence, who got on a stage with a guy who isn't even running for president and got his head handed to him by a guy who isn't even running for president, was on the stage with Gavin Newsom, who was there to tout Biden's accomplishments. Show. To speak with Randy, dial 561-270-3844. That's 561-270-3844. Our economy, um, revisions for the third quarter, uh, I mean, these are numbers you just don't really see uh, no. these days. But over 5% growth in the U.S. economy, 5.2% rate in the third quarter. Uh, that's, again, uh, comparing us to the rest of the world, that's pretty extraordinary. It is. And remember, the number was eye-popping already. It was 4.9% yep. when first announced. The GDP for the third quarter revised up yesterday to 5.2% growth, which is a massive number. Just one of the data points that continue, for the most part, to be positive about the American economy. What's really interesting, though, is that when you ask people if they think the economy is good, they say no. <laughs> I don't get it. Because it's never, ever been this good. Where is the recession that everybody's been waiting for? It didn't happen, okay? None of it happened. I mean, the idea that, uh, you know, uh, they brought down inflation, gave us a soft landing, meaning no recession, and that growth is over 5%, that is amazing. Sure, let's talk about some good news in the economy. Uh, inflation is moderating, as I think most people know, but just to put that in perspective, we got as high as 9.1% at the peak of the post-pandemic uh, buying frenzy, shall we call it, and that is all the way down to 3.2% in the CPI. This blue line is what we call core inflation. It's when you take out food and energy, which tend to be very volatile, and this is what the Fed looks, like, looks at when it's trying to get to its 2% line right down here. So we still have a ways to go, but I would say very few economists expected this to come down as far and as fast as it has. And that means obviously good news for consumers in terms of what their real spending power is. So you've had wage growth throughout this period and actually accelerated due to the low unemployment rate and, uh, and the demand for workers, and it's above 4%. But after inflation, Americans have been negative for a good while, but the good news is now they're positive. They may not feel it, they may not believe it, uh, they may not watch Morning Joe to know it, 
But the fact <laughs> is their, their incomes after inflation are actually now in positive territory for the first time since the pandemic. Know it, own it, work it, spend it, use it, save it. You're doing good. It's about as good as it gets. 5.2% growth. Inflation is almost down to 2%. And wages are beating the rate of inflation. I, I don't know what uh, people expect to get, uh, you know, from a presidency. I, I'm not really sure. I'm not really clear. I don't even understand. But everything that this man does is for the middle class. Every single thing. He advocates for unions. Unions to say, okay, we got a president that supports us. We're going to walk out. We're going to strike. We're going to this. We're going to that. Everybody wins. Everybody gets a wage increase. Everybody gets benefits. Everybody gets what they uh, sought. I mean, even the railroad workers and people on the hard left were saying, oh, Joe Biden's no friend of unions. I mean, those rail workers, they didn't get their uh, sick days. Oh, yes, they did. Pay attention try to keep up everybody i mean it's so many lies the crazy part the thing that really makes me insane is that that the right wing doesn't know what they're talking about it's that the left wing doesn't know what they're talking about it's that the hard left is so interested in beating him uh, at the polls to insert an autocrat or somebody who will never have another election. I, I, they have gone so far to the left that they are literally, uh, you know, Marxist at this point. And we've been called Marxists for the entire time that Democrats have been Democrats. And it hasn't been true, except now it is for a certain segment of this party. There are people that are literally Marxist. There are people that refuse to tell both sides of a story. Refused to, to, to even entertain the idea that he might be a good president. I, I, do, I, I don't get it. I don't understand it. I don't know what they expect to get out of it except for, you know, they're making money in the present because, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're contrarians and people like a contrarian. That's all I can deduce. But it's very dangerous. People are, are so uh, hateful right now. And, uh, you know, the idea that you can't be this or you can't be that and you have to go in and you can't come out and you can't uh, because people are so misinformed or disinformed. Listen, Elon is the only person that's being punished uh, by corporate America. Why would that be? Why, as, as lame as corporate media is with, the, with regard to Joe Biden's unbelievably glorious record on the economy, his amazing record on unions and wages, his amazing influence on uh, student loan debt and all the other things that we say we care about, okay? If it weren't for the Republicans, we would still have a child tax credit in place and you would see even more than 50% of our children being brought out of poverty, okay? being brought away from hunger, being brought away from, uh, you know, going to school without breakfast, without lunch, right? That would have ended. But the Republicans couldn't take all this good news. So they had to say, we're letting the child tax credit end and we're not going to take a vote to reinstate it. This is what we're all about. We want to point to Joe Biden and we want to make it so that he failed. Not we failed, he failed. I, I, you know, it's sick and it's sad. I mean, the only person I, I saw on the floor uh, yesterday uh, was uh, Sheldon Whitehouse. He was out on the floor saying, you know, hey, listen, if you if you restored the child tax credit, you know, we wouldn't uh, we you would see a, a decrease in child poverty in this country because we already saw it. We did, uh, I think, remarkable work to expand the child tax credit. Yep. Uh, dur during the covid uh, epidemic. And it made a truly a remarkable difference in uh, children's lives. Nearly 50% reduction in child poverty. Why would you not want more of that? Really? Yet we let it expire in 2021, and sure enough, child poverty climbed back up again. There was a lot of fear mongering when we did it, that this was going to discourage people from working, that they oh, just please. sit at home and sop up the tax credit. But the fact of the matter is, if you can't get child care, you can't get to work. Right now, without congressional action, three million children are projected to lose access to child care. 70,000 child care problem programs could close. Bring that to Rhode Island. It's 21,000 kids in my state who could lose access to child care. Oh my God. 680 child care workers could lose their jobs. 419 different child care providers could close. Mm. We simply cannot let that happen. It is wrong. It is dumb. Yep. It is penny wise and pound foolish. 
We need to do three simple things. Make child care a priority, encourage work and earnings, and reduce child poverty. We can do those three things by reestablishing the child tax credit and continuing to support child care providers. Thank you. I mean, and the, and the uber evangelical Christian types uh, pretend that they don't know the answer to child poverty. They don't know what works. They don't know what to do uh, to alleviate child. You know, they have no clue. Well, we do. We know what works. We saw what worked. Why wouldn't you want more of that if you were, you know, a timber chat? Why wouldn't you want more of that if you were a Ron death sentence, right? You know, like, why wouldn't you want to bring children out of poverty if you care so much about what they read? Why don't you care that much about that they eat? It's really sad. It's really sick, okay? But Bidenomics freaking works. 14 million jobs, 10 times more than the last three Republican presidents combined. Because he had 800. 15,000 manufacturing the, the, the jobs. jobs were because 3. of the COVID lockdowns. Are you kidding 3. me? 3.9% <laughs> unemployment. As he continues to talk over me, I'll talk to the American people. 3.9% unemployment, the lowest black unemployment in American history, the lowest unemployment for Hispanics in American history, the lowest unemployment for women in 70 years, the lowest black poverty rates in history. Mm. That's this administration's agenda. And by the way, as you smile and smirk over there, you should know this, the American people. Here's a guy who celebrated Bidenomics just this week, celebrating $28 million that came into your state because of the Chips and Science Act, one of the most significant economic plans right. since FDR. I'm proud of the work Biden and Harris have done. I mean, why wouldn't you be proud of the work that Biden and Harris have done? Why wouldn't you be proud of the work that the Democratic Party has done? Why wouldn't you be proud? Why wouldn't you be proud of our platform? Why wouldn't you be pl proud of our agenda and our execution on our agenda? You know what the Republicans have done? They had the House majority, right? They've done nothing. All they ended up doing was expelling another member. That's it, because this is, this is who they prioritize. Bulbert's going to go. Uh, Marge is going to go. Getz, what did Getz spend his time doing? What did Matt Getz spend his time doing? He's in the majority of the House of Representatives, and he spent his time getting rid of his Speaker of the House over, you know, a vendetta, over a personal problem he has with, uh, you know, his speaker. And so he got rid of his speaker because he made a deal and his speaker was stupid enough to make the deal that one person could make a motion to vacate. Matt Getz did that. He got the votes. They got rid of their speaker. And now we have a guy we never even heard of named Mike Johnson who stands there and defends George Santos while claiming to be an uber Christian. Timber Chet, too, an uber Christian, but defends George Sinner. You know why? You know why, everybody? Because we're all sinners. Get the... Get out of my face with this garbage. Do your freaking congressional work and stop doing the pastor's work. I never saw people like this in my whole life take up all the oxygen in the room and a president just keeps on going. <laughs> Mary had a little man. Blah, 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 blah. The fault. We believe that all men are created. We brought to the magnificent mosaic that is America. From radio beacon to radio beacon. I have a dream today. Change has come to America. Believe me. Help is on the way. Knock, knock. Who's there? Hey. It's a figment of your imagination. Randy Rhodes Show. Turn up your mind. I'm here. Uh, to tell the truth about the Biden-Harris record and also compare and contrast Ron DeSantis's record and the Republican Party's record as a point of contrast that's as different as daylight and darkness. You want to bring us back to a pre-1960s world, America in reverse. Uh, you want to roll back hard-earned national rights on voting rights, on civil rights, on LGBTQ rights, on women's rights, not just access to abortion, but also access to contraception. Mm. You want to weaponize grievance. You are focusing on false separateness. You in particular, Ron, are on a banning binge, a cultural purge, intimidating and humiliating people you disagree with. You and President Trump are really trying to light democracy on fire. So, Sean, there are profound differences tonight, and I look forward to engaging them, but there's one thing in closing that we have in common is neither of us will be the nominee for our party huh. in 2024.
<laughs> Shots fired. Shots wow. fired, baby. I mean, it was that was his opening statement. That was the beginning of it. That was right at the front of the entire uh, debacle, uh, where Ron DeSantis flailing for some sort of uh, approval from the Republicans in uh, you know a primary. Uh, somewhere in any state, he'll take it. it would, uh, his last gasp was to debate a person who isn't even running for president and lose to him. I feel like Gavin could sell me oceanfront property in Nebraska. He could. Like this dude. He actually could if he didn't look like Christian Bale in uh, American Psycho so much. I, I would uh, swoon. I would be, uh, you know, enthralled. I would actually uh, genuflect at the knee. But he, every time... Listen, he was great last night. I got to give it to him. He was uh, amazing. He flayed him. He flayed Ron DeSantis eight ways to Sunday. And all he did was show up, Newsom did, to do what I'm doing. And that's to tell you Joe Biden is an awesome, awesome president. And you people are selling grievance. Grievance that does exist and grievance that doesn't exist. You know, you're trying to take us back in time to a place where women's contraception included keeping their knees together and pressing on an aspirin, right? Uh, that's it. That's all you had to go. And, uh, you know, a, a situation where, you know, people were separated by skin color and bank loans and the ability to get them. And it, it's unbelievable how far back. And, and he kept on telling Ron DeSantis last night over and over, all you have is a culture war. That's what you're stirring up here. You have absolutely no grievance with the economy because the economy is, is percolating. It works. It's working for everybody. It's working for uh, uh, Latinos. It's working for African-Americans. It's working for white guys. It's working for union guys. It's working for non-union guys. It's working in the hills. It's working in the dales. It's working, you know, from sea to shining sea. And all you want to do is uh, say it's not because you want to sell grievance and the way that you do it is really offensive to me i mean he just laid it out there he told him the way that you talk about and abuse and malign especially lgbt people he said it was just it was it was uh, you know an affront to him he couldn't even just stand there and take it anymore you know he's like uh I, I got to tell you, you know, your immigration policy is nothing but humiliating people. The last guy you want to talk to on the you know, immigration, your immigration policy can best be described as a governor from the state of Florida huh. going into another state, the state of Texas, mm. lying to migrants, promising them jobs and housing, sending them to an island, Martha's Vineyard, and then sending them to a parking lot mm. in Sacramento, California. I met with those migrants that you lied to under false pretense, that kind of gamesmanship, using human beings as pawns, I think is disqualifying. So again, a guy who stands here, who's been out on the Republican debate stage saying, well, he's gonna be tough, he's gonna shoot people with backpacks, right. uh, and that he has a strategy to potentially even invade our second largest trading partner, uh, Mexico, that has a record of supporting amnesty and supporting reforms under the Obama administration is the last guy to be standing on stage talking about the issue of immigration reform tonight. Yeah, you. Seriously, the guy is not a border governor, okay? He's not the governor of a state that has a border with Mexico. And yet he inserted himself into the whole debacle of immigration, which will never be solved until we do comprehensive immigration reform. And when people say, but Randy, what does that mean? Uh, you know, that's word salad to me. It means we have a broken asylum system. And unless and until we address it, this is the way it's going to be. And every president is going to bitch and moan about border crossings and every president is going to bitch and moan about deportations and every president is going to do it a different way. Uh, but we're going to still have the same freaking problem over and over and over and over and over. Administration, Republican, administration, Democrat, Republican, Democrat, Democrat, Republican. It won't matter. It won't matter. And Republicans will never vote for Im uh, comprehensive immigration reform. Never. They don't want to, you know, like recognize that DACA kids who have not even gotten a traffic ticket because they can't remain dreamers and have gotten a traffic ticket deserve to be citizens after all these 25 years of doing nothing but educating themselves and not getting a traffic ticket ever. They won't do that. And that's our price. 
And their price is, we want to complain about the border, therefore we'll do nothing about the border. Period. End of story. That's, that's as far as they'll go. But it's obviously, this is the real origin of the border crisis, in case anybody ever wanted to know. We have a broken asylum system so that people can come here and claim asylum when they aren't really in need of asylum, meaning their lives aren't in danger. Some people's lives are in danger. Some people, if they go back, they will be killed. That's a legitimate claim of asylum. And that should be heard. And we need more judges to hear those claims. How hard is that to figure out? Not hard at all. Oh, Mark in Indiana. Yes, ma'am. How are you today? Good. Uh, Thank you for taking my phone call. I really appreciate that. Um, In my mind, this is my opinion only, that the reason Joe Biden's poll numbers are as low as they are is three reasons, okay? One, the Afghanistan withdrawal, where we left behind the military hardware. That wasn't good. Okay. Number two, the border crisis is a problem. Okay. Number three, he con- he made a political deal with the far left from the Green New Deal where we reduced our drilling and drove up gas prices. Now, on almost everything else. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> what, 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 what about the yeah. green? Wait, wait, what? What? What, go, go, what, what I was going to say was almost everything else. I completely agree with you. If you look at his accomplishments, he looks like a two term president, but then. His age also get you know doesn't do him any favors either. That's More it. Control. That's it right there. They keep making him into some you know yeah. mental midget because he's he's uh, you know eighty one years old and he's somehow outlived his usefulness. As far as uh, you know the border, you you heard what I have to say, okay? And you know that I don't disagree that our border is uh, in need of uh, reform, okay? Uh, Afghanistan, that's Donald Trump's fault, okay? He left two thousand five hundred troops in Afghanistan. Did not take the hardware. Just took the troops out, handed it off to Joe Biden and told Millie that's what he was going to do. He said, it's not my problem. I'm handing it off to Joe Biden. Joe Biden did the best that he could with the 2,500 troops he had, and that was to get everybody that he could out of there as safely as possible. 13 people lost their lives to a suicide bomber. Okay, and that's what happened in Afghanistan. But the man ended a 20 year war. uh, And this is the thanks he gets. As far as energy goes, Uh, We are a net exporter of oil and gas. So nothing Joe Biden did on green or renewable affected any price of anything at all. Because we export more than we actually drill. I mean, we export more than we use. So that's just not true. But the age thing, you got it, pal. That's why. All they keep doing, and I think that might have been the other callers, uh, you know, thing that he was trying to get out that is that the corporate media does make joe biden into some elderly i don't know dementia patient and he's totally with it he's totally on top of things all things randy at randy roads.com go go for launch speaking truth to power the randy roads show I'm the only guy here that's a border state governor. Hmm. You're trolling folks and trying to find migrants to play political games to try to get some news and attention so you can out-Trump Trump. And by the way, how's that going for you, Ron? (laughs) You're down 41 points in your own home state. On the issue of immigration, Joe Biden put a $14 billion immigration package up in front of Congress, 2,300 border agents, Mm. as well as custom officials, 1,000 new law enforcement officers to deal with a fentanyl issue. And by the way, that's a major issue in your state, 41% higher overdose rates than the state of California. And here's what I haven't heard, not a peep from Ron DeSantis. They want to demagogue this issue, want to play politics with issues. You don't want to solve this issue. Why don't you lead your party? Why don't you? Why don't you lead your party? You want to be the leader of the free world, but you won't lead your party. What you want to do is, uh, you know, like uh, go to Texas, ask them to give you Venezuelans, by the way, not Cubans. Oh, no, because the Floridians here will go crazy, back crap crazy if you use, uh, you know, Cubans as uh, little props in your little game, in your little diorama of, of, of oppression. But no, go get some Venezuelans and ship them to Martha's Vineyard. And leave them in a parking lot. 
That's what Ron DeSantis did to put his name in front of the American Republican primary voter. The cruelty of it was the only thing that got him any attention at all. And that's why he did it. And now he's being called out for it. And all he does is that 80s jaw slide thing. That's all he does. I, I swear to God, I don't know, like, uh, is that a cocaine thing? Is that a bad bite thing? I don't know what thing that is, but it's really he, the, the cameraman at Fox News did him no favors last night. The cameraman at Fox News literally honed in on Ron Death Sentence's face as Gavin Newsom humiliated him time and time and time again. You've been on a banning bench. 1,406 books have been banned just oh. last year under Ron DeSantis' leadership. I love that he keeps pulling this out. I've seen this. He's been doing this all of a campaign trail. What's wrong with Toni Morrison's books? It's not banned. What's wrong? It's, it's not, not true. Not. What's wrong with Amanda Gorman's? It's not banned. And the poetry. 1,406. False narratives. 1,406 books narratives. have been banned on your banning bench in the state of Florida. As it relates to parental rights, oh, come on, California, it's in our constitution, parental engagement. It's called the LCFF process. We actually require parental engagement on curriculum development. And we don't, complete lie, we don't require K through third grade sexual education. That doesn't happen until middle school. Mm. What you're doing is using education as a sword for your cultural purge. And you know what, with all due respect, you know, I remember in the 1970s, in the 1970s, Watch we had a bill face. called the Briggs Initiative. And there was a guy by the name of Ronald Reagan, so offended by the Briggs Initiative, which was the original Don't Say Gay bill. In that case, it was not allowing teachers that happened to be gay to teach. And Reagan had the courage to stand up. And he said, you can't catch gay like you can measles. I don't like the way you demean people. I don't like the way you demean the LGBTQ community. I don't like the way you demean and humiliate people you disagree with, Ron. I really find this fundamentally offensive. And this is a okay. core value that distinguishes the values of my state and, frankly, the vast majority of Americans against the weaponization of education I and the purging of he's a I have a Nicely done. I mean, called him out by name, looked him dead in the eye, and said, you know, I find you offensive. I find all this purging, uh, this, this, this social, uh, you know, uh, war that you're having with uh, you and your sycophants at the expense of people who are just trying to, uh, you know, send their kids to school and have a nice day. I find it morally offensive. I find it personally offensive. I find you offensive. Ron not only looked him in the eye, but called him out by name and told him exactly how he felt. That is so long overdue. I loved it. I just freaking loved it. Because that's all they got. Cruelty. That's it. That's what they have. Grievance. Hatred. Separation. There is no solution to any of the problems that, you know, our caller said, okay, he had a problem with Afghanistan. Well, that's solved, right? Sorry. It ended 20 years of war. 13 of our brave soldiers died, and they died, uh, you know, trying to get people out of there on the last possible day. 20 years of war. That's what it looks like when it's over. Looked just like Saigon, didn't it? Because that's what it looks like when it's over. A useless, thankless war. The border, I've explained to you 8,000 ways. They don't want to solve this problem because the solve is there. The solution is knowable. It's doable and it's knowable. And Biden put together a package that would put 2,300 uh, you know, new judges, that would put 1,000 new border patrol. In. The Republicans don't want to see it happen because they want to, as Gavin Newsom so clearly says, demagogue the issue. You know, it's like they learned their lesson from Roe. You know, they demagogued that thing for years and years. And people like me told you, you know, women will die if you overturn Roe v. Wade. If you say that you can't have an abortion in this country, if you say that that is not health care, uh, women will die. They just will because, uh, you know, sometimes they get septic. Sometimes uh, uh, the, the, the fetus that they're carrying dies in utero. It's, it's a fact of life. I'm sorry. It's ugly. It's not, uh, you know, uh, pink or blue or a gender reveal party. It's the ugly belly underbelly of pregnancy. Pregnancy is a dangerous thing for a woman's body. Pregnancy is a heavy, heavy lift for a woman. Why do you think you're so uh, completely intimidated by us? Because we can do that. And you can't. Some men actually admire it, and other men are like fearful 
Oh, my God. You can bleed five days, uh, you know, every month and still live? Yes, yes, we can. Yes, we can, and we can still have a smile on our face. So F you. Yeah, uh, so now they want us to die for their ideology by taking away health care and now taking away contraception, too, on top of it so that they can feel like they're in control of some damn thing. But they could be in control of some damn thing. They could be in control of the border. They could be in control of, uh, you know, the globe. They could be in control of not going to war. They could be in control of, you know, uh, uh, letting kids learn whatever they want to learn whenever they're ready to learn it. I mean, it's just so unbelievable to me that they could be in control of a whole host of things, but they're not really interested in solving problems. They're interested in demagoguing them. And so when Roe got overturned, it was just like the dog caught the car, as they say, right? Because now all of a sudden women are saying, oh my God, I was pro-life my whole life. I I wanted to have kids. I did get pregnant. I got pregnant, you know, and I I had a miscarriage and now I have to explain myself. Or I got pregnant and in 26 weeks, I found out that the 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 organs that should be in the uh, the skull aren't there, or the organs that should be in the uh, uh, stomach is in the chest, or the organs that need to be in the chest are in the stomach. Do you, I mean that happens? It's sad. It's horrible. But now you have to go through court. Now you see. I never understood marriage. It's hard enough breaking up, but then you have to go get a divorce. Like, this is what they're doing to, you know, women with pregnancy now. It's really sad. And there he was, Ron DeSantis, on the stage yesterday having to defend a six-week abortion ban. And he couldn't do it because it isn't doable. Women die because of crap like that. To speak to Randy, call 561-270-3844. 561-270-3844. My name's Jody. I've been a pediatric nurse for 18 years. I love what I do, but we definitely need more support. The last administration's policies were so troubling, and our healthcare system has become a business, and people are becoming billionaires off the backs of sick people. I've seen the heartbreak when parents are trying to figure out how they're going to pay for a medicine to keep their kid healthy. But we are seeing lots of positive changes. And thanks to President Biden and Vice President Harris, families can afford medication now. The Biden administration lowered the cost of prescription drugs and passed laws to make healthcare more affordable. The idea that we could go back to the policies that help the rich get richer and left so many people behind, I don't wanna go back. I can't go back. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message. Beauty. Very nicely done. I mean, honestly, so what, 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 what is Trump out there saying? For anybody who's still paying attention to that man, he's talking about repealing, again, the Affordable Care Act. Really, 40 million people get their health insurance because of the ACA. 100 million people get health insurance because there is no exception to giving insurance to people with pre-existing conditions. So right there, uh, you know, and and what would they replace it with? Remember all those times, repeal and replace, repeal and replace, and then it came down to it, they had no replacement, none. It was a lie. Everything they do is a lie. Everything they do is for cruelty. Everything they do is making people think somebody is getting something that you're not getting, and that has to stop. What? Yeah, he's talking about repealing the ACA. It's so disgusting. Every single retread, every single issue that they have no solution for is going to be paraded out in front of our faces all through the next year, right? All through 2024. Right up until Election Day. Good Lord, man. All right, Brother David, you're in Kansas. Hi. Okay, it's like I set up my crackbook page this morning and then in the chat room. Hi, chat room. Regarding. Hey, chat room, if everybody in there would give a dollar, we'd be okay. Well, there you go. They never do. And it's Friday to boot. Yeah. Um, 
<laughs> Regarding Pinocchio Santos getting the boot on World AIDS Day, sometimes says God so quickly. And as one has said, since the partners succumbed in 1994, until there's a cure, every day is World AIDS Day. And accordingly, until there's a new quorum, every day is an uphill struggle against fascism. So being after all me, um, and knowing that it's always on We the Peeps, uh, words are magic. That's why they call it spelling. I am already looking at this as an opening. Uh, the, the student loan, debt forgiveness, just ding, 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 left and right, left and right, left and right. We must rally around President Pop and give him Jimmy Carter-esque survivalist mojo and get him and she who must be protected at all costs back in with the long-awaited but not yet experienced blue tsunami and give them the supportive con Congress. And then in, in the right time, I, you know he's thought about this, like Winston Churchill before him, he steps down, she picks Sheldon Whitehouse, and progress continues. <laughs> I like let's that. Let's look at the future. I right? like that scenario. Harris yeah. Whitehouse, can't you see it on a bumper sticker? Well, you Just know, th this is this is why they're trashing her. We gotta get her. there. <laughs> but this is why they're trashing her. This is why they're saying, you know, she's uh, she's no good. She's bad. She's this. She's that. Of course. Yeah, of I know. Of course. I know. I know. Uh, but listen, uh, anything is better than somebody who really hates yeah. us being in charge of us. You know, being. Ding, 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 and he really, ding, ding, really ding, ding, hates us. He really does. He he has okay. he has an axe to pick. Well, He's got a bone he to pick himself with himself. If he could think of that way, right? It's all about hatred. Yeah, uh, self-loathing. I know. Love. I know. Gorgeous girdles for everyone. Everyone. Not for just a few. <laughs> I love you always. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, honestly, this is a, a a group of people. It's not just Trump. You know, DeSantis too. DeSantis is a a cruel person because he's a little guy. I mean, he's one of those. You know, that's why he has lifts in his shoes and all that stuff. He's just he's a he's just a little guy, is what it is. And when you have a little guy, you always have cruelty. I don't know why that is, because women love little guys. They love medium guys. They love big guys. They love all guys in between. But, uh, you know, listen, there are people in this world that are so full of self-loathing that the only way that they can feel anything is to denigrate you, to hurt you, to make you writhe in agony, and then they could feel that. Because God forbid they ever felt their own feelings about their own selves and did any of the work necessary to be good, you know, be good with yourself. You know, they're, 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 they would cave in on themselves. The emotion would be so, uh, such a flood that they wouldn't be able to process it, as they say. But I don't want a person like that in charge of all of us, okay? I mean, you know, it's so interesting, but uh, I don't want to talk about Israel at all except to say this. The more that you, you, you find out about what Netanyahu did to that place, the more you should see what could happen to us. That's it. That's the whole lesson there. Because he, Netanyahu is a right-wing, lunatic, fringy dude who threw him with an ultra, ultra right-wing, uh, uh, their version of an evangelical, extremist, racist group of people and ruined an entire country. Ruined it. To the point where people were out on the street every single day protesting him wanting him to resign wanting him to leave wanting him out of their lives and he wouldn't go and all of a sudden they're attacked and he becomes this wartime thing and everybody's supposed to genuflect to him and, and rally around the wartime president except today there was a new york times story that said that he, knew, well, doesn't say that he knew. It said that the Israeli intelligence and the Israeli military knew that Hamas was rehearsing this attack and that everything that they saw and put down in this report was exactly what happened. Everything from they were going to you know, do a barrage of rockets followed by drones taking out the uh, security uh, around the fence right, uh, to in invading by virtue of going over the fence. Even paragliders were mentioned in this uh, report that was translated from Arabic into Hebrew, okay? Arabic, why? Because it was Hamas's plan. And that women who are, were on the border at that time, you know, peace activists and stuff, had seen 
Hamas rehearsing this and kept reporting it. And uh, Netanyahu's government kept saying, oh, it's just aspirational. They could never pull it off. It went all the way into the very detail of going into those towns and uh, kibbutzes. Kibbutzam is really how you say it. And taking hostages back into Gaza. All that happened almost to the T, almost to the letter. And he, his government said, it's just aspirational. They don't have the wherewithal to do it. And women who were on the border were saying, they do. We're watching them do it. They set up these uh, you know, little towns that look just like our towns. And they're practicing. And they've been doing it for a year already. What does that tell you about desperation and cruel people? This is the Randy Rhodes Show. It is. To speak with Randy, dial 561-270-3844. That's 561-270-3844. All right, Joe in Washington. Hello. Hello. Um, I wanted to comment on Ron DeSantis' smile. It is like a rictus on a corpse. He is the most unnatural-looking person I think I've ever seen. It's like he wants to jump out of his own skin. Yes, it does appear that way. Did you just call me Tom? <laughs> no. Oh. No, I did not. Oh, I yes, hope you not. Did. Yes, no, you did. yes, you did. Yes, you did. Well, I... <laughs> I didn't mean to. That's okay. I'm sorry. It's okay. I, I want to say one other. I want to say one other thing. All right. When he told this 15 year old kid to take a mask off that was up on stage with him a while back, mm-hmm. I wish I'd have been that 15 year old kid. I'd have told him what you know. God, he's just he's so cruel. Yeah, and he's you so just ugly. slap the dumb look off his face, right? I mean, it, it, he looks yeah. more awkward than uh, like the Carolina Panthers at this point. You know what I mean? It's like. I think the only I think the only reason that he actually got up on that stage last night was so that he could have a moment without snotty Vivek Ramaswamy, uh, you know, you know, like screaming over him. And he thought that, you know, he would be able to get fed all these really friendly questions. And believe me, Sean Hannity tried to feed him and feed him and feed that beast. And it still didn't work. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Randy, have a great weekend Thank and you, uh, keep Joe. up the good work. Thanks. You keep it up. You're the man. Uh, Rudy in Arizona. Hi, Randy. Thank you so much for your show. You're welcome. Uh, I was I was hoping that you could maybe repeat the uh, beautiful rendition of the Ukrainian national anthem you played the day after Russia invaded Ukraine uh, yeah. for the show, and I, I love it. I play it all the time. I, I I cry all the time. It's a wonderful, beautiful song. And uh, at the end of it, when you played it the first time, you you sit right there and you look in the camera. And you said, "My peeps." It yeah. was just. They are my peeps, was, and, and people don't, you know, they they just forgot about that that entire we, democracy, we can't. you know. They just we, we, we can't. You got to you got to uh, once a month or once play it play it often, Randy. Would you please? Yeah, I love it. It is beautiful. It really is. I I I, I wish I had it ready, but <laughs> I don't. Uh, Greg in South Carolina. Hello, Randy. How you doing? Hi. Um. Uh. You know, I was quietly relaxing watching the show until the guy called in. And made the comment about uh, President Biden getting us out of Afghanistan as being a failure of his. It just drives me crazy. It shows how good these propagandists are yeah. to, to make a negative out of what I consider one of his greatest accomplishments. I know. It, 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 it burnt my butt, too. Okay. It was really grotesque. But, you know, people didn't realize. What the Doha agreement actually was that Donald Trump negotiated with the Qataris, right, being the host for these uh, Taliban negotiations. And they negotiated a a complete withdrawal except for 2,500. And, you know, uh, Trump actually told when when Milley and everybody went to him and said, what are you going to do with 2,500 troops? You won't be able to get any of this equipment out of there. He said, I'm leaving it to the next guy, which told you two things. He knew he lost, okay, which is important. And also that he didn't give a damn about any of the people that were being left behind. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, and and another thing you have to look at, just, you know, ask all of the American, you know, servicemen, those servicemen and women who have not been sent there since then to put their lives on the line for nothing. Nothing is what we were there for. Nothing. 
and all the American servicemen and women who haven't gone there and died since. Well, I will say we, this. We while we were there. there, not that I think we should have been there in any way, shape, or form, okay? But while we were there, women were free. Women were able to go to school. Women were able to work. Women were able to serve in uh, their, their parliament. Women were able to raise their families as they saw fit. And now they're veiled again. They're back living under Sharia law. They are no longer able to go to school and educate themselves past like first or second grade. That's all that they are allowed to even uh, do. Uh, the idea that, uh, you know, uh, they have lost their freedom. An entire generation of women were raised, uh, you know, uh, under our protection and they were able to flourish and they were able to uh, create something. And that's all been yanked out from under them. All of it. And that's sad. If I but, can make one more comment about this, as a veteran, I was uh, I was in Vietnam right toward the end and I was in Southeast Asia when Saigon fell. Mm. And I have seen a chaotic withdrawal. Yeah, you know? extraction, yeah. Um, uh, we didn't get anything or anybody out of there. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and I so don't know what they I guess like I should bring this. I guess people they were able, I, and, he, and he actually had to coordinate with other countries. It was, it was a massive airlift. Of a bunch of European countries, a bunch of, you know, Trump would have never got any of that done. No, and he didn't. He didn't get it done. He had a chance. He made the agreement with the Taliban and then walked away and left it to Joe Biden to, you know, clean up the mess. That's what he did. That's what he did. Just one other mess that Biden had to clean up. From yes, Trump. and yeah. we always do. We always do. And, you know, I think the best way uh, that I ever heard any president who inherited a Republican president's mess put it was Barack Obama when he said, you know, they, they, they take the car, they, they drive it into a ditch, they crash it, right? The car is left, you know, with like two wheels on it, uh, you know, smashed on fire. We go, we get the car, we rebuild the car, we put the car back on the road, and then they have the audacity to ask us for the keys. Yeah, and I guess they will as long as these knuckleheads keep voting for them. Yeah, because of the the culture wars, you know. I mean, they, they play into this grievance that some people have in this country that somebody somewhere might get something that they didn't get. And it's all about that. It's all about the, the, the you know, idea that somebody may get something that you didn't get. And it's just not happening, but that's what they drill into people's heads. You vote for Joe Biden and people who borrowed money aren't going to have to pay it back, but you will. You will. Unless you're Marjorie Taylor Greene, you know, and you get a COVID uh, bailout and then, uh, you know, it's forgiven. Then you don't have to pay it back either. You know what I'm saying? But they do this constantly and it, it, it's such a good performer for them. That and hatred of, a, of the other. It works really well for them. Yes, it seems to. Thank you, Randy. You're you welcome. have a good weekend. Thanks for calling me. I appreciate it. You too. Uh, Mary in Virginia. Hi. Hey, Mayor. Am I talking to you, Randy? Uh, yes. Randy? Yes, Mary. Uh, Randy, thank you so very much for taking my call. <laughs> oh, you're uh, adorable. I, I need you, and I just discovered you on TV. Oh, hey. Uh, and I'm going to support you financially, but I wanted to talk today because in my 84 years, I have since World War II, I have not been sickened as much as I was by today's news. And I mean specifically that in order for us to understand the enormity of this evil that uh, Netanyahu's hiding of Hamas plans for one year means, America has to think if, what, what would it mean if President Bush had hidden foreknowledge about 911. We would have gone crazy. Yeah. It's the, 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 the Zionist extremists are terrorists. terrorists. They are not Israelis. They are not good Jews. They are terrorists. And I think the massacre of 1,200 Jews, which they allowed, and 20,000 Palestinian women, children, and babies, which they carried out as a part of the Zionist extremism in order to establish what is a, a, a really horrible thing, and that is they want to get rid of the modern democratic Israel, which we all support, 
and establish a Zionist terrorist theocracy in which the slaughter of Jews and Palestinians can occur, and that makes them no better than Hamas. In fact, it so makes them worse. So I just they need, to, know better. I need to correct one thing, one thing. Okay. Okay, Zionism isn't a religion. Zionism is nationalism. So when you keep saying Zionism and using it as some sort of a sword, uh, it doesn't work. Uh, but uh, but okay, the, right I, wing, I... the right wing, the right wing uber orthodox, okay, the ultra orthodox group, the religious right in Israel is Netanyahu's, uh, you know, crowd. That is that is who is in his cabinet. That is who joins in, in, in voting for this, uh, you know, craziness. So, uh, but the two things aren't the same. But I get your point that if he knew and let this happen, oh my God. It's too much to, to bear. Thank you for making the correction. That's okay. When I said Zionist, I was assuming of specifically a group of terrorists, but you're quite right to point out to me that these have to be distinguished from an orthodox right wing yes. just, uh, uh, yeah. just as much as we distinguish right. other terrorists. So yeah. thank you. I needed to oh, be corrected on that. My but pleasure. I hope to heaven you will keep uh, pushing the fact that Netanyahu Ruined that place. Yeah, he did. Theocratic. He, is, he will destroy the, democ- the modern democratic Israel. Right, because the two things cannot coexist. You can't have democracy and theocracy. It just doesn't. It doesn't play in Peoria.